I would like to show you uh, how to synchronize changes uh, that you make in a fork, okay? And so what you can do is you can search Google for syncing a fork, uh, and it explains um, how you should go about doing this, but I'll go ahead and uh, I will demonstrate this for you as well. Okay, so let's say um, uh, I'm gonna come along here, and um, and you know make some more changes and we'll make more changes okay and we're gonna save this and we're gonna close this and um, and I'm gonna just check its status and it says that we've modified this I'm gonna go ahead and add that change and I'm gonna go ahead and commit it with a message and we'll say modified file one and we're gonna do that okay and we'll go ahead and then we're gonna push that uh, change to uh, the remote server. Um, meanwhile, let's say the professor has published something onto the class class repository. And so um, if I'm, I'm going to just go ahead, uh, and I've already done this separately, but uh, and we'll see that uh, what I've done is I've added a new file, file 3. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to refresh this page. Okay and we can see file 3 has been added and file 2 has been changed so file 2 there's this extra line that says changes were made to file 2 file 3 uh, says a new file has appeared and meanwhile file 1 doesn't have uh, reflect any of those changes about uh, red shirt prof making um, a change okay over here um, if we check this repository okay file 1 has all of these changes that Red Shirt Prof has made. Um, file 2 doesn't have the, um, the change that appears on the class repository, and file 3 has not been made. So in the class repository, you know, this file has been changed, and file 3 has been added, and things like that. And so what we need to do is we need to fetch the changes that have been made in what's called the upstream uh, repository. So this, our local computer directory and local computer repository synchronizes to the one that's associated with our account because we don't have right access to the professor's repository. And so we're allowed to make changes to our files and we can make changes to file one and whatever, but sometimes the professor adds um, files to the uh, the class repository and we want to uh, change those. So we have to fetch those and this is called the upstream. It's called upstream because when those changes are made in this repository it's kind of you think of a river and uh, those changes flow down to your, uh, uh, your remote repository which then get pulled down to your local repository. So what we're gonna do um, again you can just kind of follow along these things is uh, you know, just um, make sure uh, you are on kind of your, your local branch, okay, local master branch, and we're going to do git fetch upstream. So remember earlier we, have, we had configured our remotes to have an upstream thing, okay? So we've gone ahead and we fetch the upstream and it pulls down all of this information, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, check out our local master branch, okay? and we're, it says we're already on master which is totally fine and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a git merge and I'm gonna choose upstream slash master okay and uh, so I'm gonna do git merge upstream master and that's gonna because I'm already on my local uh, master branch on my local repository this will merge the changes that we re uh, retrieved or fetched from upstream master Okay, when I do this, it might pull up a text message or a text editor. Okay, and uh, and that's fine. Uh, and to uh, kind of um, save this, I'm going to hit uh, colon uh, write and quit. Colon wq will will do that. Okay, and when we have done that, it says uh, we've made the merges via recursive strategy, and it says okay, we've we see there's been a change to file 2 and file 3 has been added and if we look at our directory indeed file 3 has has appeared okay uh, the new file 
file 2 reflects the changes that were made by the professor and in our file 1 it retains the changes that we made as redshirt prof okay um, if if we, you make a change to a file and the professor also makes a change to that same file we might run into merge conflicts um, and and that's that's a whole nother topic that uh, you know I don't feel like covering right now but this covers the idea of um, being able to pull new files that the uh, the professor posts um, and you can then keep them uh, synchronized to your thing while also making changes to your repository um, via the fork. Okay.